Howland Reed seems to have some sort of magical abilities, but what exactly his powers are isn't really known, and the way that they're described to us is a little bit weird. Today I want to focus on exactly how his powers are explained to us and try to figure out what exactly he's able to do. Then we're going to be looking at the two times that Howland Reed was either important or potentially important, the Tower of Joy and the endgame of our story to see how these powers could come in handy, or could have already come in handy in the case of the Tower of Joy. Because there are many mysteries going on at the Tower of Joy, but two of them may have very direct explanations in the powers that are ascribed to Howland Reed. One of these explanations is something that I've believed for years, and the other is something that was brought up for the first time that I've seen it at least, in one of the comments of the last video that I did on the channel. So just to establish what powers we're talking about here, let's take a look at the line where Mira gets a chance from Bran to brag about how cool her dad is. Bran asks if he had green dreams like Jojen, and this is Mira's response. No, but he could breathe mud and run on leaves, and change earth to water and water to earth with no more than a whispered word. He could talk to trees and weave words and make castles appear and disappear. Now, all of these things that Howland can supposedly do sound pretty magical, but a little bit more context actually makes me question a few of them. The first quote that I had read there from Mira was from Bran to A Storm of Swords, and here's a quote from Jojen about his sister Mira from Bran 1 A Storm of Swords. The gods give many gifts, Bran. My sister is a hunter. It is given to her to run swiftly and stand so still that she seems to vanish. She has sharp ears, keen eyes, and a steady hand with net and spear. She can breathe mud and fly through trees. I could not do these things, no more than you could. To me, the gods gave the green dreams. And to you, you could be more than me, Bran. So if you notice there, a few of their powers actually overlap. And when it's talked about in the case of Mira, it's talked about more like they are survival skills than they are magical powers, which I think is sort of interesting. In the context where she's given credit for her skill as a hunter, allowing her to stand so still that she seems to vanish, and then she's given the ability to fly through trees and breathe mud, whereas Howland could breathe mud and run on leaves, which sound like the same thing, it sort of sounds like maybe they can just jump from branch to branch in crazy ways because they're very good at climbing trees, rather than they actually have the physical magical ability to fly or run on leaves. In the same way, Breathe Mud, when given to Mira in the context of being a good hunter, could be magically some sort of physical ability to actually breathe in swamp water or mud, but it could also just be like, oh, she's able to climb through the grass and stalk you in the swamp and lower herself down into a puddle of mud and almost disappear, and it seems like she can literally breathe mud and pop up somewhere else, right? Like, it could be something like that, where... This is a legend that is given to the Cranach men that they can breathe mud, when in reality they can just hold their breath and slide through the swamp in crazy ways. Some of these seem to be at the very least implied to be just survival skills that they have attained such a level of mastery of that they almost seem like magic. But that explanation kinda doesn't work for me for a few of the powers given to Howland. Very specifically, the ability to turn water to earth and earth to water with nothing but a whispered word. I mean, what the heck is that? Like, the other ones you can sort of see how you can sort of build them up. Like, weaving words could just be he's very good at negotiating, he's very charismatic, he's got that riz, he can explain something to you and all of a sudden you feel like you're agreeing with him for some reason. He could weave words in that way and it could be something completely non-magical. But I don't understand how you turn water to earth and earth to water by whispering to it without some sort of magic. Sort of the same with talking to trees, which could be explained in something we've talked about in previous episodes where it seems like one of the ways that Bran could in theory communicate with the past is through the rustling of tree leaves because that's what Ned is said to have heard when Bran tried to call out to him. He heard a rustling of the leaves. Well, if someone can talk to trees, it seems like it might be implying they can understand the language that Bran can speak to them in. That's at least one of my theories about what that means. We'll put a pin in that and come back to it in a moment. But you can see how, in any case, right, there are a few of these things that are said to be done by Howland that don't really seem to have such a simple survival explanation. 
he seems to have at least a few genuinely magical abilities, and he may have even learned a few of them from when he visited the Green Men on the Isle of Faces. Or, perhaps the fact that he had these abilities in the first place was the thing that allowed him to visit the Isle of Faces at all. Now, I've already recently done some videos talking about a possibility for what Howland could have learned on the Isle of Faces, so I'll have you go check those out if you're interested, and now I'd like to talk a little bit about the idea of the Tower of Joy, and how a few of these powers that we've just highlighted that Howland could have may have actually come in handy in that specific situation. So to set the scene, we have a few mysteries about the Tower of Joy and Howland Reed. First of all, the idea of what Ned was talking about when he says Arthur Dane would have killed me but for Howland Reed. And the other one that's always been weird to me is when Ned says they tore down the entire Tower of Joy when supposedly only he and Howland were the witnesses who lived to see what happened. How does just Ned and Howland Reed pull down an entire tower? And we're going to start there because it's probably the most straightforward and least consequential, because I do understand that, like, okay, if you have, like, the tools for it, like, if you have the proper type of hammer, whatever, two dudes could definitely spend, like, a day hammering away at the foundational stones of a tower, and they might be able to take it out, depending on how the tower is constructed and, again, what tools you have. Yeah, two people could take down a tower. So, a little weird, and maybe seems like overkill, but again, if they were trying to hide the scene of everything that happened there, maybe demolition was the best case. But, one thing that was brought up in the recent comments of my videos here was the idea brought up by Carl Karsnark here, that what if Howland Reed just whispered to the ground underneath the Tower of Joy and turned its foundation into water? Because he's directly said to have the ability to do that, and that would instantly take down a tower. Because, you know, turning its foundation into water, or mud, is a very, very good way of doing a demolition very quickly if you only have two guys and you're trying to take down an entire tower. So yeah, I do actually really like this idea and think it's completely plausible that the way that they could have taken down the Tower of Joy could have had something to do with Howland's ability to do potentially green magic of the control of water and earth, and if he can indeed turn water into earth and earth into water with nothing more than a whispered word, well, that might be a direct explanation of what exactly happened to the Tower of Joy. Which is where we can move on to a comment from Connie Super, which gets into the further implications of some of these other powers that Howland also has, and starts to get into some of the things that I also believe Howland has done at the Tower of Joy. Specifically, that he may have used his ability to weave words, because... He's really only known for doing one or two things, and the fact that he's given the ability to weave words on a somewhat magical level, and one of the things that he is known to have done is prevented Arthur Dane from killing Ned, well, it really does seem to me like maybe he said something very convincing, or if he does actually genuinely have some amount of magic to his words, he could have put some sort of spell on Arthur Dane and basically pacified him, I don't know. I assume it's much more like he's just got that riz, he doesn't actually magically weave words in that way. I could see it as some sort of situation where Howland Reed brought Arthur Dane and Ned to some sort of negotiation point, allowing Ned to go into the tower and see his sister. There is that whole line where Ned says they found him there, so it does imply that more than just Howland Reed went into the room and found Ned holding Liana. This would track with the idea of Arthur Dane and Howland having a chat outside as they allow Ned to go see his sister, perhaps one more time. Then perhaps further conversation with Howland could have convinced Arthur Dane to not resume fighting, or that Ned was on the same side, or something that could have led to some sort of resolution where they found him there, holding Liana's hand. Now, I don't personally have super firm beliefs on what I think happened at the Tower of Joy, mostly because I do think it is built to be a giant mystery box, and George has specifically allowed himself to have Arthur Dane and the King's Guard have survived and be hanging out in the Neck, or potentially somewhere else, if that was a thing he really wanted to do. I think he could have that work with the setup he has, or he could have them all be dead, and no one would really be able to complain. So, whatever you believe actually happened as an end result of the Tower of Joy, I do think there is a decent chance Howland Reed used his ability to weave words to potentially be the thing that prevented Arthur Dane from killing Ned Stark. But I am also open to other interpretations and other solutions. 
Now, the next thing comes back to something that I said we were going to come back to, which is the idea that Howland could potentially talk to trees. Because in the television show, at least, we have Bran going back in time and witnessing the Tower of Joy. Which is sort of relevant, considering we also have Bran going back in time and rustling the leaves when he tries to call out to his father. So, if we know Bran is eventually likely to go back and try observe the Tower of Joy, and has the ability to rustle these leaves when he tries to call out, and there happens to be a guy who knows how to talk to trees at the Tower of Joy, perhaps having just learned how to do this very recently from his visit to the Isle of Faces, well then all of a sudden, there may be a situation where Bran has the ability to send messages to Howland at the Tower of Joy. I don't know, seems like it would track, right? I don't know how relevant that's gonna be, but like, we have Bran, who is going to be viewing the Tower of Joy, who has tried to call out to people in the past, so I thought that was a connection worth pointing out. Again, Tower of Joy is currently a giant mystery box, so any speculation on what may or may not happen there is just that, speculation, but I think that would be an interesting, weird little wrinkle that could be thrown in there that I don't think I've seen discussed before. Could Bran use Howland's ability to talk to trees in some way to influence what happens at the Tower of Joy? I'm definitely really curious to hear what you think of all of that down in the comments, and the next thing that I want to talk about is the idea that, well, if Howland was using the ability to turn water to earth and earth to water to potentially take down the Tower of Joy, or as Connie said in her comment, make it disappear, well, what if that's what he's doing with his supposedly moving castles down in the neck? What if he's just got like four or five of them that he just either raises and sinks the foundations whenever he needs to move around, and therefore no one knows where Greywater Watch is because there's five Greywater Watches, and he can just pop it up and sink it back down into the swamp, essentially whenever he wants. The ability to turn earth to water and water to earth with nothing but a whispered word seems like it might be something that would allow Howland Reed to do just that. I don't know. Again, let me know what you think of that down in the comments. Does that logic make sense that this power might be something that explains how Howland moves his castle around? Now, I've already spoken a little bit about how I think Howland will be important in the end of our story, potentially returning with his knowledge of green magic at a time when a cycle of rebirth needs to take place, and that could be potentially the role he has been given by the trees or by the green men. My video on the Isle of Faces goes more into detail about that if that's something you're interested in. The other thing that could be very useful of his abilities in the endgame of the story is, again, his ability to weave words. It would be very interesting if Howland Reed would show up at a bit of a time of conflict and get everyone to unite and sort of go down whatever path it is that they need to go down to get out of this big mess. That would be sort of interesting if he came back and used his ability to weave words in the endgame, but, again, let me know what you think of all of this down in the comments. I'm really interested to hear what stands out to you in this whole big discussion about Howland and his powers. And this was less a big theory and much more of like an analysis of just, okay, what exact powers does he have? What does that probably mean? How could that be useful? And hopefully it's inspired some thoughts for you. And hopefully you'll share all of those down in the comments so we can discuss and try get to the bottom of this as a community. Thank you all for watching, that's all I have for you today, remember to subscribe before you go, and I'll be back with something else very soon.